Thank God for this great opportunity and what is happening here. Melissa, amen, great, great soul, and we claim the victory already. As we claim the victory, we got to work. We got to work while we claiming the victory. So we say to everyone here, we need to work, and we need to work now and up until that day. And also, she the first one on the ballot of 50, so you can't miss it. Amen. You can't miss the first person. Amen. Come on, somebody. So we're going to make sure we got friends all over this city, all across this city. We're going to use our influence with our families, our friends, our acquaintances. We're going to use our influence to make sure that the West Side we represented downtown in City Hall. Talk back to me, somebody. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get ready this time, if y'all will. We're going to have prayer. Uh, then we're going to move from there. Our Lord and our God, we come again and say thank you for this glorious occasion. History making. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus for Three Cross Baptist Church for opening their doors. And we thank you for the various churches and the various pastors that uh, is represented here through their members of uh, their year. And Father, we actually look at the, uh, all the members and all the friends and all the community peoples, and especially look at our elected officials. As they go through this race of aldermen and treasure and mayor, but Father, especially look at all of us on this great west side and look at our treasure, our next treasure coming from the great west side. We ask your Father in Jesus' name to let us be able to stand, let us be able to call victory at the end of this stage. And Father, in Jesus' name, we know you're able to do anything but fail. And right now, we just give you the praise and the glory for the victory already. We know you can do anything but fail. And you said in John 16, 24, you said, we can ask the Father anything in your name. And you say you'll do it for those that believe in you. And Father, in Jesus' name, we got a few believers in the house today. And we got a few believers out in the street working as we talk. And Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you right now in the pressure of the holy name of Jesus. Claim this victory through the aid of the Holy Spirit. Let all of us say amen.
Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Praise the Lord. Wow. The race wasn't given to the swift. Yeah, but those that endure it to the end. Our occasion for the day is we're here to rally and lend our support to Melissa Kaya Irving, treasurer of the city of Chicago. Let me just thank my colleagues, West Side, and I like to say it with some meaning, because we are on the West Side, I like to say, West Side! If we don't take care of our own, then who will? If we don't call it like it is, then who's going to call it for us? Now you all, we have an opportunity to make history. And it haven't been in my 20 years as being the Ottoman that I've seen all of the West Side come together. And you know, when people come together, you can do something, you can make some changes happen. And for years, we have finally got to the point where we are all standing together on the West Side to represent our community. Together we stand, divided we fall. We can't stand to fall no longer. We have to speak out, speak up, and let our voices be heard. If you don't open your mouth, you don't get nothing. A closed mouth don't get fed. I learned something from my father. He said, if you got your fist tight, ain't nothing coming in, and ain't nothing going out. Look, let us get on the job. Let's make sure we tell everybody, Melissa Kaya Irving. And on February the 26th, we want to look up, Melissa, and we want to show you as the female, well-educated, well-qualified, I don't care what nobody say, you can handle your own. If you want to talk about a millennium, you got one. You got one right here to represent you. Not only West Side, she gonna represent this city of Chicago, and she gonna represent it well, and we gonna stand behind you, stand with you, and make sure we go out and get those votes. Punch 5-0. Man, that's a hard act to follow right there. Wow. But praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, to the minister who's allowed us to use this facility, to the Mount Vernon Church and that choir, man. They, I'm, I'm sorry, Mount Ebenezer Church. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Miller. I'm sorry, Reverend. Mount Ebenezer Church, let's get them a round of applause. They was rocking it, boy. You know, I was like scared to stand up because I was going to start dancing. I don't know if I was supposed to be dancing in church, you know. It's all right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I'm Alderman Walter Burnett, Alderman of the 27 Ward. Uh, today, I'm not here just representing myself. I'm representing my, my mentor. Uh, one of the greatest humanitarians here in the state of Illinois and the highest vote getter in the state of Illinois, the Secretary of State Jesse White. All right? <laughs> Mr. White, Mr. White wanted me to make sure that I was here to express his sentiments for the support of Melissa. Melissa is, is Melissa is the most educated candidate that's running for this office. She's the only female that's running for this office. And she's the only West Sider that's running for this office. Do you, know, do you all know that we are making history? 
There have, think about this. When have you all known that there was a, an, a West Side elected official in a position of a city-wide position? Never. It's about time that we get a West Side to represent the city of Chicago. And what other side of town is most reflective of the city of Chicago? We have everybody from the city of Chicago living on the west side. And it's changing every day. Old people, young people, folks from Arkansas, folks from Mississippi. <laughs> I looked at Danny when I said that. <laughs> but, but we got folks from all over the world moving to the west side. I know I represent the West Loop. I talk to kids every day, and they come from everywhere, all over this country, all over the world, moving to the west side. I would not support anyone different than Melissa. All right. Melissa gets it. She understands our challenges. She understands what what is good for people not only on the west side but all over the city of Chicago. I know she takes care of Jason's money at home. So if she can keep that big dude in check with his cash, I know she's going to take care of the cash of the city of Chicago. As you all have seen, now, somebody, you know, it's a funny thing. Somebody used Jesse White's image in a commercial, right? Somebody used his, he didn't, he didn't give them their approval. They just used it. somebody that looked like him, it looked like him. He's in Melissa's commercial. 100% in Melissa's commercial. And Melissa's in there hugging him, right? And he, he, letting, the, he letting the world know this is our candidate. This is the person we want to win. And usually everybody he support, they win. She's going to win. Let's give it up for the next treasure of the city of Chicago from the west side, west side, Melissa. Good afternoon, everyone. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. I came today to tell the, the saints and the voters that we are going to <laughs> that we are going to elect Melissa Conyers Urban as our next city treasurer. We are not asking anybody to give us anything. She has earned the right to be in that seat. So we've got to put her there, y'all. We can't stay at home. Last time we stayed at home, we got this man in office. I ain't gonna call his name. But I know some of us sorry that we didn't go to the polls. Well, we don't want to be sorry this time. We want to take care of one of our own. And that is Melissa Conyers. Irving. Punch 50. Her number is 50. That is an easy number to remember. 50. But now we got all the matter, all the matter candidates here too today. I want y'all to know that. So I know all of y'all from the various wards here on the west side. We got Michael Scott from 24. Jason Irving from 20, 28. Yeah, I, is my alderman. I'm a, res I'm a resident of the 29th Ward. Chris Capitelli or Farrell. Okay, I see y'all out there. Emma Mitch from 37. Did I miss a ward? Walter, where did he go? Did he leave? Where you at? Don't make me call you out now. You can't speak and leave. Come on back up here on this front row. We all in this together. Come on back up here on this front row. <laughs> but I just wanted y'all to know that uh, Alderman Miss is the chairperson 
of our West Side Block elected officials. And she does a good job, even though we all have our own mind, our own ideas, and we know what we want to do is sometimes it's not what everybody else want to do. But in this instance, we're supporting Melissa, Congress Irving. We're all going to punch 50. Now, I know there's some more elected officials out there, so don't get mad at me, y'all. I just wanted to let the people know that these people are also up for re-election, and we need to put them back in office because we need people there that know what's going on. We need people there that's got our back, and y'all know they got y'all back, so give them a hand. And Melissa, Melissa's going to have our back, too. So I want to thank you, Melissa, for stepping out. You know, it takes a lot to step out here and run for something nowadays. Now, y'all may as well know that. Because they'll get a newspaper and put some stuff on you you ain't never heard of. <laughs> but it's okay. Melissa's stepping up to the front, and we're going to be not behind her, but by her side. Thank you. Good evening, church. Amen. It is always good to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, I'm here to support Melissa because I know she is one of the hardest working people in the city of Chicago. Yeah. Let me tell you guys a story really quickly. Uh, so four years ago, I I'm running for uh, alderman in the 24th Ward. And um, thanks to the good people in 28, Melissa and Jason, they helped me with my campaign. And my campaign manager happened to be Melissa. Now, she was the first person in the office. She was the last person in the office. She was the whip cracker. She kept the money in order. She did everything that I needed from a campaign manager. And the reason that I am the alderman in the 24th Ward is largely because of the work that she did on my campaign. Now, now when I tell you somebody is organized, down to the T, when I tell you somebody is a hard worker. When you look that up in the, in the dictionary, there's a picture of Melissa. So much, in fact, that uh, I, I don't think we were friends for the first couple months that I was, uh, <laughs> that I was elected because I, 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 I owe her. I mean, I owe her so much for, for the position that I'm in. And so it would only be right for me to come back and support her. Uh, but again, But again, it is easy to support somebody who knows what they're doing. It's easy to support somebody who is smart. It's easy to support somebody who you know is loving and caring. Uh, she takes care of her husband and her daughter. Um, she is a great mother. She is a great public servant. She is down in Springfield lobbying on our behalf. She's my state rep as well. So I know uh, she's over here fighting for the west side of Chicago. She's fighting for you and me. She's fighting for children. She's fighting for the west side of Chicago. So we need to fight for her. We, we need to make sure that I mean, this room is full, and I, and I appreciate everybody being here and everybody supporting Melissa. But when you get home today, call your auntie. Call your sister. Call your brother. Call your cousins. Call everybody that you know who is voting. Let them know they have a chance to make history. We're going to put a smart black woman from the west side of Chicago in a citywide office. There are only three citywide offices in Chicago. There's the mayor, there's the clerk, and there's Melissa Kanye's Urban, who's going to be our next traveler. So let's make sure, let's make sure that we get all these pink shirts out, all of this red, all of this west side love, Let's elect Melissa, the, the, the treasurer of the city of Chicago. And, and don't, do not forget, do not forget, punch 50 and tell somebody else to do the same. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Well, my name is Carrie Still. I'm president at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. Thank you. Oh, and once before we start, because I'm in the house of the Lord, of course, I need to give an honor to God and bring you greetings from Trinity United Church of Christ. So, of course, we're all here to support Melissa, and we know she's going to be victorious, and we all are going to go home and tell our family and friends to vote for Melissa as well. But right now, I'm simply here to introduce the choir today. So, can the choir come up to the state, Mount Vernon Baptist Church Choir?
applause for Mount Vernon Baptist Church Choir one more time. Also, who recently joined us, I would like to introduce Cook County Commissioner Dennis Deer. Right. Right. Next, we are going to hear encouraging words from one of our very own trailblazers. It is an awesome, awesome opportunity. It is an awesome opportunity for everyone here to hear her encouraging words, but also it is so inspiring and honoring for me to introduce you. Ambassador Carol Mosley Braun. Yeah. First, giving honor to God, Amen. Reverend Clergy, Amen. Pastor Donahue, yes. elected officials, Melissa. I am so happy to be here with all of you today and to say I ain't running for nothing. Okay, let's just be clear. <laughs> my, my running days are over. And in fact, what I like to say is I'm a recovering politician on my fourth step. <laughs> But I've served as, um, at every level of government, in the state legislature, as an assistant United States attorney, as a, uh, a county elected official, as a United States senator. When I was elected to the Senate, I was the only black person in the Senate, period. Uh, uh, and the first woman from Illinois, the first Democrat ever elected, uh, the first black Democrat. Then after my Senate term, I went on to New Zealand to become ambassador. So, and as my brothers put it, if I was any further away from home, I, if I was any further away, I'd be closer to home. So it was halfway around the world. But I'm so glad, and I'm so glad to be back to see all of you and to see my friend Danny Davis, who went out there and campaigned in this kind of weather for me. And that ultimately proved to be a losing campaign, but thank you, Danny. He went out there anyway and to help me out, and I will never, ever forget, or forget it. Yeah. So, uh, and to all of you, thank you for coming out for Melissa. I'm here to give words of encouragement to Melissa uh, because, I, again, my resume is what used to be. Melissa is the future. But she is coming on. She's already put it together to be in the state legislature. Actually, that was my first, that was my longest tenure was in the state legislature. I was 10 years a state rep, and uh, uh, so I know exactly what that position is like. I've never been elected citywide, but this you will be a first. You'll be a trailblazer here in the city. And to the rest of the elected officials here, I, it, I can tell so many, I can tell stories about just about everybody, except I really feel old looking at Alderman Scott. I mean, his dad and I were contemporaries, okay? So, you know, <laughs> so uh, but again, I'm just happy to be here with you and to say to Melissa, uh, and I see with her daughter, I do understand, it's, you know, it's tough. You know, when you're a woman, you expect to do it all, right? Yes. You know, to take care of him yes. and take care of the war, take care of the, the job, the city and the job, take care of the babies, keep the house clean, make sure the dinner's on the table. You got to do it all. But I am confident Melissa can do it all. She's got the talent and the capacity the commitment and the compassion and the, and, and the qualifications. She is eminently qualified. I wouldn't be here if she were not qualified for this job. She really is qualified for the job. And we must never forget that. That's got to be the touchstone. You know, uh, 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 so Melissa, I don't know what else I can tell you except hang in there. I'm here for you and will be here for you. Whatever I can do to help, even babysit. <laughs> I'm a new grandmother of twins, by the way. I babysat last night. I'm really happy about that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, so, uh, but yeah, whatever it is I can do to be helpful, I'm prepared to do for you. And to the community as a whole, we have to remember that power yields nothing except to a demand. It never has and it never will. Power, of course, is the ability to do something for somebody or to somebody. Am I, right? Am I right? For or to somebody. And the fact of the matter is that having the power in somebody who not only looks like you, but who thinks like you, who shops in the same stores you do, who you can see in the neighborhood, whose kids go to the same school, that is vitally important. 
That is vitally important, and we must never lose sight of the fact that we have a generation of young people who've come up, who have been schooled in how this stuff works, who understand how government is supposed to work, not to mention the politics. Because you do understand they're two different things. Government and politics are two different things. But I'm convinced that Melissa has the ability to handle both. And I want to thank all of you for coming out in support of her. I'm happy to be and to join you. Whatever it is you want me to do, I am happy to try to do. Uh, like I said, I'm on my fourth step, but I'm prepared to go. <laughs> I'm prepared to make a complete relapse for her. <laughs> but again, thank you again for being here, for being in support of Melissa. Help to spread the word. Uh, uh, Alderman said exactly right. Uh, go, uh, Walter, there you are. Yo, when you go home, don't just keep this to yourself. Tell everybody you know, because that really is where it starts. It starts in the home and with the families, and then it moves out into the community. So get your whole family on Melissa's bandwagon, and then get your block, your next door neighbor you haven't spoken to in a year and a half. You know, that person, go and talk to them. And so the word can get out there so this lady can win and be our next treasurer for the city of Chicago. Thank you very much. So now you have a fifth step as babysitter. You know that, right? <laughs> so next we have, um, I would like to introduce our very own West Side legend, Congressman Danny Davis. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I was sitting there thinking and I was saying to myself, I sing because I'm happy. <laughs> I sing because I'm free. His eyes on the sparrow and I know he watches me. And I was thinking of that because of these two great choirs who just kind of lifted us up when we came in especially both of them, but especially that first one with all those young people in it. And it made me remember when I was young. On a typical Sunday evening like this, we'd be at KYB Club. And that means know your Bible. I grew up in the rural South, as did Emma Mitt. And Emma and I used to pick cotton. That's right, we did. Now, Emma and I pick presidents. We sure do. Matter of fact, I was sitting in my office the other day and Kamala Harris called me and she said, Danny, how you doing? I said, I'm doing good. She said, well, I'm getting ready to run for president of the United States and I wish you would support me. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, honey, if you run, I'm going to be supporting. So she's running. A couple weeks later, Corey Booker called me and say, Congressman, we've been working together on something, sickle cell stuff. He said, I'm finna announce that I'm running for president. And I said, Lord have mercy. <laughs> and I told this other woman, <laughs> that I'd probably support her. <laughs> so what am I going to do? And then I thought of my school teacher, Miss Beatty, who used to teach us poems. And one she taught us was about a little boy who had two girlfriends. And he said, I got a love for Angeline. He said, but I love Caroline too. He said, now I can't marry both of them. 
said, Lord, what am I going to do? He says, Angeline can cook, but Lord, Caroline can sew. He said, both of them are so pretty and intelligent. Lord, I just don't know which way to go. Because he never got married. <laughs> but we don't have a choice. I am so delighted, though, really, to be here and to see all of you. To see Reverend Miller, he know about picking cotton. I guarantee you, if he didn't pick none, his brothers probably did. <laughs> I bet you he did. See Reverend Edie, see Reverend Davenport. Ran into a gentleman who was a big boy when I was living in Arkansas, and he was a big boy. Uh, Thomas King, we always just had a little respect for them because they were a little clump of black people who lived in an area where they had some education. Where I lived, we didn't have much education because my dad had finished the fourth grade. There wasn't a single black person in my town that had a college degree. We never went to school more than five months a year. We're talking about black history. We went to school January, February, March, April, and school was over the first week of May. They had school closing. Then we'd go to school again from about the middle of July until the middle of August. And as Emma can tell you, it would be time then <laughs> to start picking cotton. <laughs> and you try to get through by Christmas time. I mention that just to mention how important these elections is. Elections are so important until I was reading the Bible the other day. And I read in the Bible where the trees had an election. Now, anybody don't believe it, get your Bible and open it up to the book of Judges. And you will see where the trees said, come and let us go and select from amongst us one who would be ruler over the trees. Now that may not be the way the Sun Times would, because I don't always agree with what they do. But you know, if I lived in the 24th Ward, I'd be voting for Michael Scott. They endorsed him. I do live in the 29th Ward, and I'm going to be voting for Chris Talaferro. If I lived in the 27th Ward, I'd be voting for Walter Burnett. And if I lived in the 28th Ward, I'd be voting for Jason Irwin. If I lived in the 37th Ward, I'd probably vote for Emma Mitts twice. I'd, 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 I'd go, and that's just to simply say that we have unified our efforts under the leadership of Alderman Emma Mitz. She is our chairman of the West Side Black Elected Officials. And we decided that we were going to stick together. You've heard birds of a feather flock together, that we was going to stick together and we were going to work together to make our community where we are the best that it can be and that we know more about it than anybody else. No matter what the Sun Times might say about anybody, I know more about them amidst than the Sun Times. I guarantee you, there's no doubt in my mind that I know more about Emma Mitts 
than the Sun Times will ever know. Because I make it my business to know. I get as much guidance as I can get from up there, but I also read all the stuff I see, talk to as many people as I can see. And when Melissa said she was going to run for city treasurer, it was like manna falling from heaven. It, 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 I immediately got excited and started jumping up and down, saying, run, Melissa, run. Run, Melissa, run. Run on. And all of us have from now until the 26th. I don't really believe in a lot of talk. Talk is easy. Talk is cheap. Talk oftentimes is just sound and fury signifying nothing. But you also got to walk. I know it's cold, so you can walk a little while. Go out there and knock on a door or two. Just go down your block and knock on everybody's door and say, vote for Melissa. Call everybody up that you got a telephone number for and say, vote for Melissa. Send a letter, whatever you can send, and vote for Melissa. I've never wanted anybody to get elected more than I want to see Melissa get elected to the Senate. I have a need to see that happen. And that will mean it wasn't bad when the man shot at me and Ed Smith one night and we was out putting up signs. Scared us to death. But we didn't quit. <laughs> we just didn't go back out that night. <laughs> so we, 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 we said, let's go get a cup of coffee. <laughs> and, yeah, I knew Ed didn't drink coffee, <laughs> so, so we didn't bother. So please, let's make sure. Karen Yarbrough, if I lived in Maywood, Illinois, I ain't never lived. I voted, I'd vote for your husband and you, because he was the mayor. But it really is good to see us together. God bless you all for coming. Reverend Donahue, thank you for letting us be here. I'm ready to roll Melissa for city treasure. All right. All right, give it up one more time for Congressman Danny Davis. Is there anyone here who has a black SUV Parked in the parking lot. Oh, you got it? Okay, because someone was blocking somebody in. Awesome. Now we can move right along with the program. Next we have our first African-American clerk, Karen Yarbrough. Good afternoon to all of you. So, you know, when you talk about the West Side, you gotta talk about the West Suburban folks too, that's us, okay? And, and we holding it down out in the, uh, in, in the West, that's the West West Side, okay? But I'm here to support Melissa. Uh, you all know, I know you know the story, right? You know, me and Ed Spitz Smith had a baby. Y'all know that? I'm just saying, y'all know that, right? Look at everybody looking at me like, what? <laughs> Rumors, right? So me and Ed Smith had a baby, and his name was Jason. <laughs> and he just left out of here. So that's our political son. And our baby had a baby, and he had a wife. And his wife's name is Melissa. So this is family for us, okay? So I'm here to support Melissa. Now, Melissa, I can't vote for you, 
but I swear I can maybe call a few of my friends that 1.4 million people that voted for me in the last election from Chicago land area, I can call those folks. And I brought a check too. Now let me say something about a check. Now those of you who have not supported her with your money. We get your time and your talent. We appreciate that. Y'all saw her on TV? Yeah. She looked good, didn't she? Yeah. She did. And people who don't know Melissa saw somebody who is qualified for this office. I am proud of her for stepping up. But of course she stepped up. She my baby too. Remember, me and Ed Smith had a baby. Y'all got that part? And our baby got a wife and a baby. So Melissa's my baby, and I know she's going to do well in that office. It's nothing like folks being qualified, though. I mean, just straight up qualified. You know? Now, they can't say that about us because we usually overqualify for these offices and stuff. We usually are. You know, when we put our best stuff up, we send our best to represent our people. And we know we need a lot in our communities. We know that. That's why we have to send our best. So Melissa, I got a check here for you, because see, I can't vote for you. But the rest of these people here, they need to be writing a check too. They need to write a check too. They do need to write a check too, because we want to keep her on TV so the folks that can't be here they can be there, and they can write a check, and she can continue to be on TV. I love you, and you're going to make a fantastic treasure. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait. Can't wait. So this is straight up black girl magic. I'm just saying this is black. Y'all know about black girl magic, don't you? You all know about that. I know the women in this house know all about black girl magic. Uh, you all look from the federal level right on down. We are calling attention to us. We are ready to run. We are at the top of our game. We can, you know, fry up the, how they say that, fry up the bacon and all that kind of stuff. You remember that? Yeah, 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 right, that, right, that, right. We can do all of that, but we can also be treasurer. And we can be president of the uh, Metropolitan Water. And we can be clerk of Cook County. And we can be ambassador. And we can be U.S. senator. So the place for a woman today is in the House of Representatives. It's all over the land. Write her check, please. Thank you. Give it up one more time for Karen Yarbrough. And just to piggyback on what she said, I want you all to know donations are very important and no amount is too small. So don't think, you know, $5, $1, all the way up to whatever you can give is useful. You can also go to her website, melissaforchicago.com, and donate online. I'm going to say it two more times so you remember, melissaforchicago.com. So what is the website, you guys? Yeah. melissaforchicago.com. All right, so visit the website and also tell some friends to visit the website. Next, we have our, a solo from Minister Tim White. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said praise the Lord, everybody. If you love the Lord, come on, clap your hands like you love him. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I want to give honor and praise to God who's in charge of my life and to the pastor of this great church, Pastor Donahue, 
and all of these great pastors, Pastor Edie, all of these great Pastor Miller, all these great pastors that are here this afternoon, and of course to all the elected officials, amen, amen. One of my favorite aldermans is here, Alderman Emma Mitz, amen, ain't nobody like her. It's one of my favorite, one of my favorite, but we are here to celebrate this jewel that's getting ready to take us to another level. And we believe God, and I tell you, I am hyena happy and peacock proud yeah. that I'm able to look at Sister Melissa and touch her and Chef Spirit is just wonderful. She's not only qualified on paper, but she's qualified in the duties that she's done in the community, working alongside her husband, Alman Irving, amen, and just being a great jewel, amen. So we're definitely pushing you and thanking God for you, amen. Of course, our keynote speaker, Dr. Carol Mosley Brown, amen, awesome woman, and we just honor you as well, all these great women, amen. amen. I don't have a musician, but we don't need no music. We just, we just, I'm just going to give you a line or two of encouragement. And I believe this will encourage you all the way. No matter what you face, no matter what may come, be confident in this and say, God's got me. Can I get three people to know he got you? Just know for you guys to see everyone out here today, it's because we all have so much confidence in Melissa and of the job that she is going to do and of and just how she is going to represent everyone in Chicago. Melissa, I'm so happy for you and proud of you and excited to see everything that's going on. Everyone here, 
please support Melissa, but also we need you to remember to go home and tell your family, tell your friends, tell everyone on social media. Leave no stone unturned and don't take anything for granted. We gotta make sure everyone knows the name of Melissa or Melissa's name and knows that she's qualified. So let's hear the words from Melissa herself. She's almost ready. <laughs> Remember the website, melissaforchicago.com. She is also on social media on Facebook, Melissa for Chicago. Melissa, you ready? All right, let's get it. Everyone give it up for Melissa Kanyez Irvin. My heart is truly overjoyed. You know, when we were looking at the program and we thought about President Carrie Steele, can someone please put, why is my baby in the hallway screaming? Why isn't she in the car? I don't understand this. What is going on? Y'all know a mommy knows her babies cry. Okay, so as we were looking at the program and we thought about the MC and we thought about Miss Carrie Steele, you all don't really know the story behind this. So the very first vice president of Metropolitan Water Reclamation District is Commissioner Barbara McGowan. Stand up, Commissioner. Stand up, Commissioner. I want them to see you for a reason. And she made it her business, and I appreciate this because she's a senior at the Water Reclamation District. Not a senior of age, a senior of tenure. Yes. And she made it her business to elect amongst the commissioners the very first African American woman as president of the Water Reclamation District. And we don't take it lightly. This young woman is representing us at the Water Reclamation District. So I just thank you for being here. This just warms my heart when I look around the room. I know there's a sea of pink shirts, but I'm just so overjoyed at the support of the West Side Black elected officials being led by Alderman Emma Mitz. I have to tell you, when Congressman Davis stood here and said how happy he was, he means it. Congressman Davis is doing everything he can to get me elected as city treasurer. Everything he can. You know, there's a statement, put your money where your mouth is. He has helped raise money. He has given money. He has brought me to the table in so many areas that I would not have been able to. It's because of him. And I really thank him for his leadership and support and all of the West Side Black elected officials. We cannot take this lightly. As the saying goes, say what you want. But for the West Side Black elected officials to come together and say, we're going to make certain that the West Side has a seat at the table. As a citywide elected official, they deserve a hand right now. So I thank them. Please also know that it's not easy standing before you. We've done so well with this election, so well. But as we continue to take steps forward, I keep reading something in the newspaper, I'm like, Lord, what next? What next, what next? But you know what, Minister Tim White? And I'm confident in this. I need you all to know that I'm confident in this. 
people ask me, how do you smile? It's because I'm confident in this. And I need you to know that. Is my daughter okay? Thank you. So I thank you, Pastor Donahue and Three Crosses of Calvary for hosting us on this evening. Amen. Thank you to the praise team out at Beniza. Yes. Thank you for opening us up this afternoon. Thank you to my home church, Mount Vernon, for singing. And absolutely, I've mentioned the Westside Black elected officials. I have to make certain that I acknowledge my wonderful husband, my supportive husband, who's certainly not threatened by me, and he knows I'm not threatened by him. I thank him for his support, and thank you so much, Ambassador. That is just awesome for you to be here on this afternoon. As the saying goes, for little old me, for a woman of your stature to be here to support me, I really appreciate it. And I know, as I look at February 26, just a few short weeks, two weeks that we have. I know that with your help and the working families across the Chicago, we can do this. And I know that with your help and the working families all across Chicago, we will do this. So when we talk about the credentials in this race, and you see this in my commercial, and people say, it, you know, I heard from an opponent. I can't believe she's saying she was born and raised in Chicago. I am the only candidate born and raised in Chicago. It's a fact. Amen. And people look at me, and it's, it's amazing when I'm in the room with myself and these other two gentlemen, that credentials don't stand up to mine. And I think about our race and our struggles. I need you to understand that this means a lot to me when I can sit in a room and be confident of my credentials. And they look at me and they say, you're born in Inglewood. I said, I am, I was. And they say, and you were raised on the west side of Chicago. And I said, I was. And they say, and you live on the west side of Chicago. And I say, by choice. My husband and I are raising our two-year-old daughter by choice on the west side of Chicago. So please know that we're in this for a reason. Our heart is in this. This is our values. This is the value of our every working family in Chicago. I'm glad to be from the west side of Chicago. I'm glad to be born in Inglewood. Because people need to know that there is someone at the citywide level that when I'm walking into City Hall, I'm walking into City Hall owing no one but the people. No one put me there but the people. Now when we got in this race, people said, she ain't got to worry, she won't get the unions. She ain't got to worry, she won't get the support of the elected officials. She ain't got to worry, she won't raise any money. So let me tell you the facts. Not only did we, and this is important because we have an opponent that says that they are progressive. Well, the most progressive union in Chicago Chicago Teachers Union has endorsed me. I don't know about you, but I would call that progressive. Hey, talk about the facts. We have received the endorsement of not only the Chicago Teachers Union, SEIU Local 73. SEIU Healthcare Illinois, Indiana. Ask Me Council 31. The building trades, the laborers, the plumbers, the painters, the, the pipe fitters, the carpenters, you name it. The police and the fire. We have them. 
In addition to the hundreds and thousands of hardworking men and women with the Chicago Federation of Labor, that's the support they said we weren't going to get. But tell me about God. But God. They didn't know who I was. They doubted, but I didn't. Because I know the true and living God that I serve. And I never had a doubt of what God can do. When I go into situations, I'm used to being the underdog. Number one, I'm black. Number one, I'm a woman. Number two, I'm a woman. So going into any situation, I go in there expecting to be the underdog. But I also go in there expecting to make God do what he does. And so I take my hands off and I give it to God. And I say, God, use me any way you so please. And so God says, and I believe this, that I'm going to be a vessel for the west side of Chicago. I believe that I'm going to be a vessel for all underserved communities of Chicago. Because we want our children to know that this can be them. We want our children to know that the President of the United States can be from the south and west sides of Chicago. We want them to know that. And we also know that even when we're black, when you're on the west side of Chicago, that's a double negative. We know that. And so this means a lot to us. And so we need to let the other people know that we won't stop. February 26th, this is our seat. We want people to know that here on the west side, we love to fight. So bring it on. He asked me, he said, you ready for this? And you heard my response, oh, you bet I am. Because I was made for this. Because God has prepared me for a day such as this. So I ask you, when we leave here, you can't walk away from here saying Melissa is running for city treasurer. You got to leave here saying we're running for city treasurer. When we leave this place, you have to spread the word and say there's a lot at stake. You have to leave here and say the north side will not beat us over here on the west side. When we leave this place, you have to say that there's a lot at stake for working families. So I ask, when you leave this place, that you will tell your children your children's children, your parents, your aunts, your uncles, your boo man, your friend, everybody. Those young folks that's standing out, they can vote. They're over 18. Take them to the polls. We want everyone to go vote. Please remember to punch 50. And I say the number 5-0. Now on the west side, when we say 5-0, that ain't a good thing. The West Side 5 yeah. We bring in the 5 yeah. Spread the word 5 punch 50. Tell everyone, you all know there's a lot at stake. This ain't easy. But we used to fight. We used to work it, so this ain't nothing for us. But I just ask that you will continue for your support. Thank you for everyone. I hope I included everything, did I? I have to ask everyone, I did. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you to all the West Side Black elected officials. I need you to stand up right now. I just saw you, Senator Van Pelt. All West Side. The Alderman Ann Smith, you better stand up. All the work you're doing in these streets for me. I am who 
I am because they pushed me. My mother left the room. She had to take the baby home. But y'all know I come from a mighty strong woman. I thank her for everything. Thank my church family. Thank all the clergy on the west side of Chicago. I see Pastor Edie here, and he's going to close us in prayer. I know that my pastor, Miller, had an outing this afternoon. He thought he would be back. But if not, Pastor Edie is going to close us in prayer. Pastor Leon Miller is here. Pastor Davenport, Reverend McElroy, we represent. I see Pastor here, Leandre back here. That's not Leandre. Who's that? Whitfield back there. Hey, Pastor Whitfield, thank you so much for coming out to support, of course, the host, Pastor Donahue. Thank everyone for everything, and we're going to have, you know what, Alderman, you, you, you're the only one that haven't said anything. Are you okay? You are right. He let me talk. He know I talk for both of us. We're going to have Pastor Edie close us out in prayer. All right. And we're not, we knew that we were going to be timely this afternoon, but please spread the word. Come by our office and get literature. Yes. People talked about fundraising. Do you know that our opponents were shocked, shocked that we were the first on TV? They were shocked. They didn't think it would be possible. But they don't know. I pick up the phone and I could talk all day. I know how to ask for money. I come from that. <laughs> be on the phone all day asking for money. This is what I do. So please know, we've been able to get up on TV, able to get on the radio before any opponent. And that really has them scared. So much so that they just went back and they've been trying to take blood from a turnip. But I tell you what, we're going to keep going on and we're going to keep on. So Pastor Edie, please close us in prayer. Come by Come by the office, 2622 West Jackson, on the second floor. Get our literature, get our window signs, get our yard signs. I know we have some information in the vestibule. Before you leave, please get the material. We have to, we have to just make certain we flood Chicago with Melissa Conyers Irvin. This ain't about me. Please know, this ain't about me. This is about us. So please spread the word. Thank you so much, everyone. And Pastor Edie, close us in prayer. Thank you. Come on, let's give the next city treasure up. Come on, let's lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Now, I know I've been asked to come up and pray, but Melissa Kanye Irvin preset the house. She said, on the west side, we will fight. We pray, but we will fight. Father, we bless your name. Thank you, God, for this servant of the Lord that you have prepared for this day and hour. Thank you, God, that you have imparted so much through her and deposited so much into her. She is the ideal candidate for the city of Chicago office of the treasurer. And so God, we pray great success on all of her efforts in the name of Jesus. And on February 26th, God, we know you got her. Show yourself mighty and strong on February 26th, and we'll all come together and shout victory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen.